Okie dokie. Now let's look at 59. So this is very similar to the last one. What was it? 42? 42. So here we have four identical charges. Q are placed at the corners of a square of side L. So your Q, your Q, you get an L and you get an L. I like to think I'm funny sometimes, it doesn't work. All right, so here's a plus, here's a plus. Everybody's a Q, they're all L away. So in a free body diagram, show all of the forces that act on one of the charges, part A. So let's choose this guy, cause he's down here there all by his lonesome, right? So if we look at this guy, these are all positive charges. Positive charges don't like other positive charges. Not one bit. They like to repel each other. So this guy and this guy, if we draw our happy little R vector, if we just pin these guys in place, this is gonna push this guy this way. We're gonna call, I'm gonna label these again because that seemed to help last time. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now if charge two is acting on this guy, he's also gonna be pushing this guy straight out of the way. So this is the force from one, this is the force from two, and then the force from four is gonna do the same thing. Shoop, force from four. Congratulations, you just drew a free body diagram. That's it. Pretty exciting, I know. Okay, so part B. Find the magnitude and direction of the total force exerted on one charge by the other three charges. So if we look at this guy, F2 and F4, they're in different directions, yes, but the thing that makes that force has the same charge and they're the same distance away, right? So we can calculate the magnitude of these two and they're gonna be the same, just in different directions, right? So let's say F2, that's gonna be K, Q1, Q2, but they're the same over the distance squared. So in this case, that distance is L. Now again, because this is already in one direction, we already know our R hat. So our R hat is just J hat. Whoop. It would be nice if I could write letters. And that's gonna be going downward. So alternatively, we could have written this the exact same way. It would have been KQQ over r cubed, where our vector in this case is just L straight down. So that would give us a minus L j hat. Hey look, those cancel out and give us a square. That's the exact same thing. So you can use whichever one you want. It's gonna give you the same thing. It's just more convenient sometimes to use some rather than others, or to use one over the other. Okay, so then, I'm gonna write this next. So this is gonna be minus kq squared over l squared j hat. So f4, that's this guy, it's gonna be exactly the same, but he's just gonna be in the positive i hat direction. So he's gonna be kq squared over l squared in the positive i hat direction. Okay, so now let's look at f1. So this guy, his R vector goes from here all the way down here. So R, you can't see that. So R is gonna be square root of L squared plus L squared or root two L. So if we do the squared R hat version, this is gonna be KQ squared over R squared, so it's gonna be two L squared. And that's gonna be the magnitude of it 
but then our R hat is going to pop us in a cos 45, sine 45. Because this is a square, these angles here are 45 degrees, right? You didn't see anything I just wrote. Okay. So cosine and sine of 45 is root 2 over 2, right? Assuming I'm remembering that correctly. So the magnitude of this force is going to be kq squared or 2l squared root 2 over 2. And this is going to be our little i hat, j hat. Well, that's a minus because it's pointing down. Whoops. Cool, cool. So, now we want to add all of these together. So just like when you're adding up polynomials and stuff, and you have to like keep all of your x squared together, and you have to keep all of your x cubes together, it's the same thing with components. So we want to keep all of our x components together, we want to keep all of our y components together. So if we take all of our x components, our x components we had f4 pointing to the right, so that's going to give us a kq squared over l squared pointing to the right, and then the x component of our f1 was pointing to the right as well. So that's going to be plus kq squared over 4l squared with a root 2 I hat. So if we add these together, they all have kq squareds over l squareds. kq squared over l squared. Then we have a 1 plus root 2 over 4. Same thing with our y's. We have our kq squared over L squared in the negative j hat from charge number 2 minus kq squared over 4 L squared root 2 j hat. So same thing over here, we're going to have a minus kq squared over L squared with our 1 plus root 2 over 4. This one's i, this one's j. Okay? So now to find the magnitude, it's like finding the hypotenuse of a triangle. This is a leg, this is a leg. So the magnitude of our force, shoop, shoop, that's what these little bars on the side mean, means the magnitude of this vector. We're going to take x squared plus y squared. So both of these have kq squared over l squared. So kq squared over l squared. So I'm just going to save us all some time and pull those outside. Boop, boop, boop. So we square it and square root it. Now we have our 1 plus root 2 over 4 squared plus 1 plus root 2 over 4 squared. Alright, I said it'd be plus a negative, but the negative gets squared, so we don't care. Alright, so then we get kq squared over l squared, square root of 2, 1 plus root 2 over 4 to the squared. We can simplify this a whole bunch. So we can suck in our 2 by making it a root 2 squared. So then we have a root 2 plus a root 2 root 2 over 4 to the squared, which is just going to turn into root 2 plus a half squared. And so now that it's all nice and compact, our square root and our square cancel each other. So our final force is kq squared over l squared, 1 half plus square root of 2. And that's it.